Today I want to cover Phoenix, a new X server written from scratch in Zig. And as they call it, not a fork of Xorg server, as this comes as a surprise. As nowadays, most developers seem to be choosing Rust over any other language to port projects. So we just received an interesting present, as mentioned, targets the Xorg server, re-implementing it in Zig. And we're going to be talking about this project, some of the community thoughts on this already, as it is already getting hyped up. And this new project called Phoenix, the goal is to focus on a few things, creating a more modern Xorg server with simplicity, security, and extension of the X11 protocol. So this is a big deal because Xorg is one of the oldest and most developed display servers and no one's really developing for it anymore. They're only fixing bugs and security issues at this point. So it's rare to see a massive challenge like this with Phoenix trying to rewrite everything from scratch. We're gonna get into some of the more specific goals here in a moment. But I do want to talk about Zig and why it's an interesting choice for the project. Zig is a low-level systems programming language and is similar to C. It is designed for writing operating systems, drivers, compilers, and focuses on very low-level code. They call themselves a simple language, focus on debugging your application rather than debugging your programming language knowledge, no hidden control flow, no hidden memory allocations, and no preprocessor or macros. And what's so awesome about Zig, and some of you may even see this as code that looks very much like C, well, Zig actually has excellent C interoperability, as Zig can compile C and C++ directly and import C headers without bindings, and which is critical. All sorts of other libraries that are going to be used by this new Phoenix X server project are all built in C. Phoenix is going to live in a C-dominated ecosystem, but Phoenix isn't the first project to try to revive X server. Over the summer, we received X Libre, which has a completely different approach. So X Libre is actually a fork of Xorg server. It's not a rewrite, not a new protocol. Instead, it's going to focus on fixing longstanding problems that are upstream to Xorg server as it has stagnated. And there was enough frustration among developers who relied on X11 to create this fork. And it has reached some milestones since that summer release. Some achievements here, including having more than 30 contributors, releasing numerous code cleanups, extending the X namespace, and created new CVE fixes. So the project has been slowly growing but it was at the center of some controversy. A long time X11 contributor known for aggressively refactoring and cleaning up code in the original Xorg X11 server code was the center of controversy as Enrico clashed with some of the maintainers of X11 and eventually forked the X11 project, creating X Libre, claiming that Xorg is stagnating, that he wants to bring X forward and that the upstream failed to do this. And that's why it's interesting to see Phoenix. Phoenix, again, is written from scratch this time, not a fork of Xorg server. They specifically say this, and they want to create a modern alternative to Xorg server. The current state, of course, is not ready to be used, which isn't surprising. But what is surprising is that you're not subscribed below. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe below. Let's talk about goals, but also the fact that Rust wasn't actually chosen in this re-implementation of the X server. As something interesting has been going on for the last year or so, a lot of projects, including big corporations, have been carefully but purposefully oxidizing their code, including Ubuntu. It seems like everywhere we look in the Linux and open source community that Rust is being chosen as the modernization path forward. We'll see if Phoenix can prove that Linux modernization is broader than just adopting Rust, as Canonical, Ubuntu's parent company, is really going all in, including going over to the pseudo RS equivalent of the pseudo tool. Starting with Ubuntu 25.10, it's already implemented and they're adopting pseudo RS by default. And it is a pseudo rewrite, memory safe re-implementation of the tool in Rust. And we're just surrounded by forks and re-implementations like this. As Ubuntu Ubuntu not only focuses on moving to pseudo RS, they're also actively moving towards using the Rust-based core utilities by default. Again, this all started with 25.10 and the official adoption will occur in 26.04. So tools like list, copy, move, pretty much everything that you're running in the terminal is going from the GNU core utilities, the classic C-based tools, to the Rust versions provided by the U-Utilities project. This transition is showing up more and more across projects. So again, very interesting that we see a Zig implementation and I'm very interested in 
how this is going to go forward. Is it going to be a smooth development project? Because right now in Linux, at least, it feels like modern equals Rust. And Zig represents a different modernization effort for low level Linux components. Rust is clearly becoming a foundational language for Linux and that's fine, but Zig can also coexist on that front. And it'd be nice to finally see a big project like this succeed or fail, doesn't really matter, but the key takeaway should be how well is it maintained. As in another example, GNOME in 2025 has now of nearly 10.3% of code being written in Rust. This is quite a lot as years before this was much less and it gets even wilder when it comes to the language distribution used in the GNOME circle apps. Rust in this sense actually makes up much more. 41.7% of all GNOME circle apps are written in Rust or at least have Rust code. I shouldn't say it that way, which is very interesting. So plenty of people are surprised by this. We're gonna get into the community sentiment, but I wanna talk about the Phoenix project goals here, at least a brief summary. First off, they want simplicity. This means implementing only the parts of X11 that modern apps actually use and dropping decades of legacy features and hardware support. They want to use a Wayland-like model with direct rendering management and no driver plugins. Security also is a big focus here with wanting to do automatic protocol parsing, memory safe behavior via Zig's safety modes and app isolation by default. Improvements in modern technology, including adding things like per monitor DPI support or HDR support as well, and no single global frame buffer. They also want to support varying refresh rates and proper multi-monitor handling. All things that Wayland has struggled with up to as of recent, although we're finally getting HDR support. Also a better, more improved graphics pipeline with a built-in compositor and lower VSync latency. External compositors would still be supported. And of course, just evolve and extend the X11 protocol where needed in places like HDR and VRR, and then define those new standards cleanly, document them, and keep the existing X11 applications working, including legacy ones. So this would be a big deal for X11 users, especially applications that haven't been able to rewrite themselves for a modern windowing server like Wayland. So the takeaway here seems to be the project's aim is to modernize X11 while rebuilding the server cleanly. That way people can properly maintain and keep contributing to an already existing Linux desktop ecosystem. Now they do explain the key differences between the X11 protocol and Phoenix. The core protocol, several parts of the X11 protocol core are mandatory to be implemented by X server, such as many font related operations. However, these are not going to be implemented in Phoenix, except for the simple ones that applications actually use, such as the font operations used for cursors. This will not affect applications that users actually use, even if they use old GTK2 applications. Strings are in ISO Latin one encoding in the X11 protocol, unless specified otherwise. However, Phoenix, all strings are UTF-8, unless the protocol states that it's not an ISO Latin one string. And finally, I want to talk about the license and frequently asked questions. But before we do, if you're ready to level up your Linux experience today, check out my checklist, cheat sheet, and mind map, all available at SavvyNick.com. Get those sheets today. I also want to talk about the community sentiment after this. As surprisingly, it's a bit mixed, but some of the questions are already answered for us. As one big one is, isn't it easier to write a Wayland compositor? Despite popular belief, writing a simple X server that works in practice for a wide range of applications is easier to do than it is to write a Wayland compositor. Not many people have attempted to write an X server from scratch or have proper understanding of the protocol. But if you do, you can see that it's quite simple. Doesn't X11 have fundamental issues with tearing multiple monitors, HDR, security, etc., that can't be fixed? No, most information about how X11 works online is wrong. Some of this misinformation has been spread by Wayland compositor developers. Wayland compositor developers, throwing some shade over there, clearly these issues are related to the Xorg server, not the X11 protocol. When 10-bit color mode is enabled in X server, it can break some applications such as Stream, which fails to start, but all these issues can be solved without affecting client applications, even without introducing a new X11 protocol extension. And with that, we seem to be getting daily commits already, with the latest one just being a few hours ago. There's been a lot of work actually, 
If we look at the tree, we'll notice we have a source directory with some project paths. We have the backend, which comprises of display, graphics and input, and protocol, which includes things like opcodes, replies, requests, and other handlers. So there's actually quite a bit written already. It clearly has a devoted founder here who is constantly contributing. It'll be interesting to follow through and see how this project comes together. I am going to be continuing to cover this project as it develops but there has been a lot of interesting comments on this whole thing. We gotta cover the community sentiment here. For example, on Hacker News here, a modern Xorg server written from scratch. This was actually posted just a couple days ago. And there's a lot of community talk about this with over 411 comments. The first one is pretty interesting approach to make X server that is essentially whale and like, and yes and no, that's sort of the idea here. But I think the takeaway is more about the project is not about saving X11, but about fixing xorg many problems are blamed on the x11 protocol and that's not where these problems exist as the developer mentioned really the problems are existing in x org servers implementation, not the protocol itself. As XOR carries decades of unused protocol paths and extensions, legacy paths that actually add complexity and bugs, and Phoenix's plan here is to drop the old fallbacks and the legacy paths and target a more modern X11 protocol usage. Also, there are some people who worry about the fact of fragmentation in an incompatible X server, saying that modern toolkits rarely use raw X11 anyway. Most applications rely on small subsets of the extensions and that Phoenix's most realistic future is going to be an X Wayland replacement. There's also, of course, debates about what language is being used. We're not gonna get into that, but probably the most interesting part is that some people who actually cheered on the X Libra project are now the same ones that think that they don't need a Zig rewrite or implementation as it will cause fragmentation, which just seems silly. It's about choice here and not about what implementation you like or don't like. That was a big push between X Libra and the actual X11 projects as I think this is a great move and I wish him the best of luck, definitely check out the project. I'm gonna put a link in the description below. Phoenix here is a reminder that Linux doesn't have to choose between keeping legacy tech forever and burning it down and starting all over. Instead of abandoning the X11 protocol, this project focuses on the fact that they believe the protocol is fine and the problem is the implementation of that protocol. Rebuilding X server from scratch with modern assumptions, a simpler design and stronger security boundaries with modern display tech will hopefully prove that Phoenix and X11 can evolve. We'll see whether or not it succeeds long-term, but I do think it is an interesting project and moving forward the right way, modernizing X11 with a cleaner implementation. But I wanna know what you think. Do you think Linux desktops are ready to fully move on and focus exclusively on Wayland, or should we have the choice of other display protocols and servers at this point, including Exalibre, and of course others. Is this going to cause fragmentation or we have room for yet another implementation or modern alternative? Let me know in the comments section below. While you're down there, make sure to subscribe below and smash that like button on the way back up. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.